Welcome back. Super excited in this short lecture. Very important. I'm going to walk you through several steps or techniques when you're starting off with your project. Because remember, the goal is to identify a small project in the organization that you work for and then take that project from the waterfall approach towards the agile methodology, right? That's transitioning element. And of course, then that transition. A successful project is only if you plan a project well. Because as they say, 90% of the time is spent on planning, right? So in this uh, lecture, I'm going to demonstrate or talk about several key steps that you should take. And then, of course, things that you should be aware of as project manager. New project managers, they tend to make several mistakes right off the bat because let's say you were tasked within the organization to start the small pro or start project and then or or let's say let me rephrase that let's say your organization is using the waterfall model for your projects for the projects right and now your intention is to provide your company the benefit of the agile scrum framework so to do that, you need to identify certain projects that you think are good for Agile development. And then, of course, select those projects and then, of course, apply the rest of the processes. So typically, the new project managers, one of the mistakes that they make is they start with a huge and complex project. And they try to apply every single technique found in the project management textbook. For example, they would have just too many meetings. They would document a whole lot of things, unnecessary paperwork. So all of these things, and I've just listed a few, okay, but you get the idea that starting with a huge and complex project, especially when your organization is using the waterfall model, and then you want to take them to the agile approach, well, that may not work if you're just selecting a complex project. What I would recommend is as a goal, as an objective, start with a small project. So ignore the complex processes, just pick a basic project, maybe a certain part of a large project, right? And make that a smaller project. And then try to focus on piloting the project because you are the one who are actually introducing the agile development framework, right? Or the agile Scrum approach within the organization. So you want to make sure that the project is small enough yet manageable and the deliverables are key or moving towards success. Here are the key and important small project steps. And it's one of my last slides. This is just a small lesson, very important. So you need to memorize this slide, okay? It's very, very critical. Small project steps that you need to take you want to move your organization from waterfall to agile follow these steps i've done this in the past as when i was starting off with my project management several years ago i started with this particular uh, i took a small project a software development project within my own company that i worked for so what i did was i took that software development for example there was a, a hr department that i was working for in fact and then i was uh, you know, I, I tasked myself uh, within the same department because we had about I think a little over 80 or 90 employees at that time within the department. So I took the one of the processes and tried to make the process more efficient, right? So I applied the Agile approach. So back then, of course, the waterfall model was very popular and the Agile term was just, you know, starting off. and fewer organizations were actually implementing this. So that turned out to be a successful project. So that's why I would recommend that within your organization or even your own department, select a small project. Your boss is now the project sponsor because you're not gonna get right off the bat project sponsor if you intend to use a large project. Project plan must not exceed two pages. So make it very straightforward, very simple. Focus on the key deliverables and decisions. And this is important. 
because the deliverables are the ones that you can actually highlight once you're done with the project. And then everyone will recognize the benefits. The goal, obviously, is to drive project to success. In doing so, you need to limit the number of meetings to scope definition. So you sit with your boss, right, who's the project sponsor, and create a scope. After the scope is created, of course, you create the work breakdown structure, which is known as WBS. In other words, you would detail out the tasks, the activities, the subtasks, and so forth. Next, you would identify the major project risks and the responses. And this is kind of important, too, because you would like to tell your project sponsor the potential risks and then, of course, document those responses. Allocate resources. Of course, once you're ready to execute the project, you would need key skilled team members. So you would allocate the necessary resources and obtain the level of effort. In other words, those team members, for example, the development team or the QA department or the BA um, area or BAT would provide you the level of efforts. What's it going to take for them to actually successfully complete this particular project? Even though the costs would be internal to your organization, but at least you'll have an idea, a level of effort from all of these team members. Once you have it, of course, then you would go ahead and create the actual project schedule. In other words, a timeline, right? So you can use Microsoft Project 2016, whatever, or the latest version, or you can use Smartsheet or any other tool. I've seen PMs use Excel too, by the way. But you can use other online resources like SharePoint and so forth. So once you've created the project schedule, of course, the step is to execute all these tasks and make sure that the project is successfully completed within the timeline that you've defined within the project schedule. So again, very important steps, especially if you'd like to transition from Waterfall to Agile within your organizations. Follow these steps, and I think they will drive the project to success. And of course, you can add and subtract any one of these based on your own experience. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear from you, your feedback. Maybe you have worked on a certain project or you're working on certain projects. So share your thoughts with other students, and that's the best way to learn. So in summary, of course, practice is key. Go through these steps, understand, starting off with a small project, follow through with all of these steps. If you have any questions, post them in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help with this. Let's move to the next lesson.